Hello and welcome to the Bellhops Tabletop on Thursday night, where we do something a little different than what we do on some of our other live shows. Tonight, we are going to be reading through and commenting on the Terraforming Mars FAQ uh, as a result of the uh, smashing success of the Gloomhaven FAQ on our YouTube channel. We are going to, uh, every once in a while, pick another FAQ for games we play and we enjoy and dissect it and go over it and uh, see if we can't have a little fun and maybe learn something, or at the very least, help you learn something. There you go. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to read through this FAQ. We're going to give you the information. We're going to comment on it. Let us let you know our thoughts on it. You may have to put up with a bit of bitter banter, as someone put it on our other video. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I haven't actually read this FAQ at a time, so I haven't prepped for this, except for the fact that I played Terraforming Mars Ah, uh, more than 30 times. I don't know what I'm up to. Possibly more than 50 times at this point. And for this night, we have brought in the rest of the Bellhop team. We have Angie Games, Deanna here, because Deanna is a both lover and expert at Terraforming <laughs> Mars, who cleans the clock and wipes the table with all of us every time it comes to the table. Hey, I have one. <laughs> uh, it's definitely one of the games that we've uh, played the most. Yes. And it's not often I can get Mo to go back and play a game again and again, so. <laughs> yeah, I need to clip that. It reminds me, I need to clip that from last yeah, night. Yeah, that's what the clip was. <laughs> exactly. yes. um, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, for those of you here live watching us, if you have any questions about Terraforming Mars or anything else for that matter, feel free to ask us in the chat. We do have a chat room open. I don't have Twitch open in front of me, but it's off to the side. Uh, we are going to go through this. It's probably going to be a fairly short FAQ compared to the Gloomhaven FAQ was multiple pages. Uh, what I think we're going to do, too, is once we're done the official FAQ, uh, we're using the official FAQs hosted on BoardGameGeek. Uh, that's actually, it's posted by Jacob Forexelius, or however you pronounce that name. I do apologize if I've got that wrong. Uh, it is posted by him, himself. So the designer himself is the one that created this thread. This is their official source for FAQ. But there are 16 pages of thread after the FAQ where Jason and I think it's his brother are answering direct questions. So I think we're going to go through and skim that and find the direct questions that they've answered as well as the official FAQ. Jacob, not Jason. Jacob, sorry. Jacob. It's Jacob Fraxelius. Fraxelius? 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 I don't know. I think that sounds like a uh, Fra Fraxen. Fra uh, is his, uh, or Fraxen is his Fryzen. username. F-R-Y-X-E-N. Fraxen? Yeah, Fraxen. Fraxen. So uh, we can just go with Friesen, Friesen. maybe? Friesen? I, yeah. We're, we're probably Ellie. butchering this, and we apologize because we really do love your game. Yes, we love <laughs> your game. And thanks, uh, Stephen Bonacore for, of Stronghold Games, for bringing your game to North America, including here in Canada. All right, so we're going to start off right at the very top, and the first thing is three common rules confusions. Yes. Up first, you have an unlimited number of actions each generation <laughs> but may only take one or two at a time during your turn. After the other player's turns, you get a new turn. Only if you passed and did no action on your turn are you out and may, ha and may not have any more turns during that action phase. So this one is extremely important. The first time I played Terraforming Mars was with a local gamer, Neil, a local heavy gamer who had heard the hype on this game. We played the extreme version because we did this wrong. We thought a generation happened, you got one or two turns, then let's say we're playing three players, me, Sean, D. I get one or two turns, Sean gets one or two turns, D gets one or two turns, and generation. That's how we thought the game played. Well, one or two actions. One, one or two, two actions. You have one turn with one or two actions. Yes. And then you'd be done for the whole generation. Yeah, you'd be done the whole generation <laughs> and generate resources again. It was so bad that we ran out of cubes and we had to take like all the resource cubes and we had to take the cubes for the players not being played and use them as 100s because we had so much money. Wow. And I'm like, this can't be right. And Neil kept assuring us we, it was right. We also, which I don't even know if this is in here, but again, I haven't read this ahead, did the draft totally wrong. So Neil just read the drafting variant and the way he has played drafts in other games is you put all the cards out on the table and then I pick one, then you pick one, then D picks one, then I pick one. And that is not how you draft. No, it is not. <laughs> and we did both of those totally wrong. The game was so bad that Neil went home and sold the game that night. I know you came home that night and said, I just played the worst game. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. 
And then I found out we played wrong and thankfully gave it another shot and fell in love with the game. But this is the mistake that I've also seen online the most often. Anytime you see anyone online who's going, wow, I like Terraforming Mars, but you get way too many resources, or there was way too much steel in our game, or we ran out of cubes, this is probably the mistake they've made. Right. And it's, the, it's a terminology issue, really, because in, in most games you have turns, you have rounds. A turn is usually a player's turn. A round is all around the table. Well, this game has more than that. It has a turn around and a generation because you just keep going around and around and around until everyone passes. Yep. All right. So uh, in setup, you choose your starting cards at the same time as you choose your corporation card. Mm -hmm. Choosing a beginner corporation must be done before seeing the cards, however. That's weird. Okay. Uh, the choosing your cards same time as your corporation, I don't think we've ever screwed that one up, seems important. The weird one is if you choose a beginner corp, you do it before seeing the cards. Now, according to the rules as written, the beginner corp's only meant to be there to give to a new player. So the first time someone's playing a game, you give a beginner corp. I don't see why it matters if you hand them the corp and the cards at the same time. Like, you should never get your card to go, ooh, do I want to play a beginner or not? Because technically, the beginner corps are only in there for first-time players. Well, now, that's not... Now, they see, they haven't implemented it that way in the Steam version, though, that's for sure. Because you can always yeah. take a, a beginner corp in the Steam games, so I'm wondering if they've backed up. We may we may learn later in this FAQ that they've backed off on that. Uh... Yeah, like, to, to be honest, I I don't have the rule the rule book in front of me, so I am assuming that it says that beginner corps can be chosen at any time. But I've always seen it like the way I play is if you played once before, get a corp. Plus, the game's just more fun with corps. Sure. Right, and yeah. we've had people that wanted to skip ahead and not do the beginner corps. Yeah, many right? times. I mean, even when I was teaching it at QCC, uh, one guy at the table was like, you know what? I'm just going to jump ahead and take the court, which is fine. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I also don't see the impact. Right. Like, I don't know. You look at your hand of cards and go, "There's no strong combo here, so I don't want a court." Like that. Just I, yeah. I don't. I don't see the point in that little tiny extra rule there. It, it I may want just, all my cards, and I don't want to pay for them. It, it may just be a you don't want to overwhelm the beginner. You know. It, yeah, but it, the point is it, that's what would happen when I give you a beginner court, though. Is then I give you all your cards and you get to have all of them. Right. But like instead, I give you ten cards, then go okay. Before you look at those, do you want to be a beginner or not? It's, like I said, that's just kind of strange. But yeah. sure, if that's the official rule, that's the official rule. So moving up next, we have variants. Now the standard game variant does not use corporate mm -hmm. era CE cards, and the players start with one production of each resource plus what the chosen corporation gives. Yeah, that's. That's, I, I don't know, it's weird that that's, I don't know how that'd be confusing, but sure. Well, I think that's just the standard. Like, so this is, this is what the game is normally. Yes, now, the, if this we, is the version of the game that the designer himself has said shouldn't exist, and he only put it in there because Stronghold Games said they wanted to be able to play the game in an hour and a half or less. Right. And he's like, my game was not designed to do this, but I will pull out some cards and I'll do this so I can squeeze it down to that shorter time frame. Right? Knowing that makes me feel better about the fact that we never take those cards. Yeah, I, no, I don't consider I, it an expansion. It's just it's yeah, the, the corporate thing. area variant. I don't consider a variant. To me, that's the standard game. Right. But yes, uh, rules as written, the standard game does not use all that. But that is not how the game was intended to be played. That was put in so that it could fit the current popularity of games that can be played in under two hours, under an hour and a half. Right. So moving on, we have the corporate era variant, or standard game, as designed by the by Frexen. Yeah. Uh, the core adds all CE corporations and project cards to the game. Players mm -hmm. start with zero production of each resource, plus what the chosen corporation gives. So this backs it off, and this is why it takes a little bit longer, because yep. you aren't getting that production to begin with. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that does. The new cards are neat. Like a lot, they added some PvP cards. There's more. There's more um, tags. Uh, the awards are a little easier to achieve with them. But the big thing is that one production everywhere. So what I do is I run a hybrid variant, which is not an official rule, where I do the standard game production with all the corporate era stuff, which that I often do for a teaching game or if I'm playing at a public event where I have less than three hours. That way you're playing the standard game with the corporate era cards. So it's you're doing corporate era, but everyone starts with one production. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Which is not an official variant. So I can't do that, say, at our great Canadian board game blitz that's coming up. Right. So we look at the clock and go, yeah, you want to fit in a game of Terraforming Mars? All right, we're going to do it this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. And then we have beginner corporations are not a game variant. 
They may be used by new players in any game variant, standard or C, yeah. in place of choosing corporation from two and starting hand from ten. Makes place sense. of choosing corporation from two. So a be out of yeah, instead of choosing out of the two out of two corporations, you get a beginner. From yeah, two, I, uh, I, it's a, it's a strange. A it's a strange uh, phrase. Is uh, rather than, you know, so you, you get a beginner instead of choosing from two corporations and getting a target. And, and what I'm wondering, and it's not clear here, is do you get to look at the two corporations first? No, that's what it's saying up here. Choosing your beginner corporation must be done before seeing those cards. No, that's what it says for your, for your other cards, does it? Choose that's... your starting cards at the same time as you choose your corporation. Choosing your beginner corporation must be done before seeing the cards, though. So to me, that means you don't get to see the other corporation cards if you have decided to be a beginner corp. Then the Steam version does it wrong. No. Yeah, because in the Steam version, you get to see beginner and your two corporations, yep. and, and you, you get to pick. And see, then, I'm thinking that standard game where it says that is talking about the um, project cards. The the okay. setup there, I think, is talking about the project cards, not the corporation cards. Well, if that's how it plays out on Steam, you're probably right. Yeah, but it's not clear here, to be honest. That's ambiguous right now. Well, and we may get to that uh, in a later clarification. Yeah, that might be in the uh, the FAQ. Down below. Uh, so down below. draft draft may be used together with any game variant, standard or CE. You do not draft the starting 10 cards, and draft is not used in solo play. Uh, uh, who would you draft with in yeah, solo play? Yeah, I, mean, I, I suppose... That's an interesting one, sure. I suppose that's one of those clarifications that you really need to put in there, but you probably shouldn't have to. Yeah, I don't uh, know. To be honest, I've never played... For the amount of times we have played Terraforming Mars, I've never played solo. I have no interest, never playing solo. It's I, not I tried it once. I tried it once on the Steam version. Um... But I wasn't 100% clear on what I was supposed to be doing, so I got my clock cleaned because I didn't realize that I, I... Oh, wait, at this generation, automatically the game's over whether you do it or not. And I'm like, oh, oh, I thought I was... I, my engine was really getting going. Unfortunately, it got going like yeah, you know, you're, you're the generation before I needed to win. Um, yeah, to be honest, I would forgotten there was a solo option. Oh, I know it's there. Yep. So moving on to our second uh, giant... Uh, or actually, sorry, I say solo, solo play uses the CE variant. So the CE cards are added to the game, and you start with zero production, plus what the Chosen Corporation gives you. When playing solo, no beginner corporations, no draft. Mm -hmm. Big shock. I would not want to start a bit with a beginner corporation on a solo game. Um, I, would, I don't know if that whole getting 10 projects for free is really powerful. It is. True. Uh, then that may be the problem. What they are. Yeah. Uh, so, a list of other topics in Section 2. We start off with blue cards with actions. Blue cards with actions can only be used once per generation. Mark them as used with your player marker until the production phase. If a card has more than one action, you must choose which one to use. Any cost before the arrow must be paid first, and then the effect after the arrow is performed similar to when you play a card, and with the same restrictions, meaning you must be able to perform the effect in full except for raising an already maxed out global parameter, oxygen, temperature, or ocean, or removing opposing resources or adding resources you can't collect. See playing card requirements below. <laughs> if you can't perform the effect or pay the cost, then you cannot, can't take this action. That's a lot of stuff in there, but it is. Uh, not stuff I think we've ever screwed up ourselves. No. Um, the important thing to note is People have thought they can't use a card because something's maxed out. Right, yes. Or thought they can't use a card because I need to destroy three trees and no one has any tree plants. Sorry, plants are the, the actual resource. Mm -hmm. There's no plants. Or I need to eat uh, bacteria, but no one has any bacteria. You can still play the card. That's, I think, the most important part of this. I don't know anyone who's ever thought that you could use both actions on a card with two arrows, mainly because the cards are usually really clear about do yep. this or this. Yep. yep. No, yeah, we, I think... we definitely thought that you couldn't do it if you couldn't remove the resource, and we actually thought you would have to remove your own resource in that case. We were playing that wrong yeah. at one point. A long time ago. Yeah. But that wasn't for the blue actions. That was any card with actions. That was anything. It was, it was usually with cards. Of Events. Actions. Events, mainly. Anything that had the, the resource with the red border. Yeah, and I think I think knowing that you can go above, uh, even though the the reason, even though the the global parameter never actually mm -hmm. increases, 
the fact that you can add more oxygen to a fully oxygenated uh, yes. Mars or increase the temperature beyond a full temperature. But bar. doesn't go beyond. It no, just no. Stays. But but the effect. But the effect the effect has that. You can't see it. It doesn't. It doesn't play out on the board. But you can still do it. Yes, you get everything else. Your yeah. terraforming rating won't go up unless there's a terraforming symbol. But you get the extra plans, or you get the symbols, or you get to put the tile on the board, or whatever the card's letting you do. Right. Uh, so yeah. the next. Well, the next it's thing. Important to note. Yes. Yep. No. No. Go ahead. It's important to note that you don't get the terraforming if it's already yes. maxed out. Correct. You yes. do not get the terraforming rating because you did not terraform Mars as required by the Earth government or whatever the the governing body is behind everything. Right. That's giving the, you the, the points. Temp the temperature can go up, but because the temperature doesn't go up on the board, no yeah. effect is played out elsewhere on the board. Um, so next up, we have cards trigger their own effects. A card's mm -hmm. tags may often trigger the card's own effect while being played. For example, De Decomposers adds a resource to itself when being played because of its microbe tag triggering the card effect. Uh, I, again, this I think is very clear on all the cards I can think of. I wonder if this might be a version uh, issue because, again, on the I know on the uh, the Steam game, it is very clear that that's okay. Like that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if that maybe was an original uh, a version one uh, confusion that has been since yeah. cleared up. I also wonder if potentially some of the cards are more clear than others. Ah, uh, could be. Yep. Now, see, particular decomposer says including this, right? Or micro card including this, and so decomposer definitely says it right on it. Every card I can think of says including this card, right? But yeah. maybe there's one or two out there that don't. So this is important for that fact. Could be, yep. Actually, it looks like there might have been two different printings of decomposers. Ah, possibly. No, that's viral enhancers. That's a different one. So I don't know. It's some other confusion someone has somewhere else that Could they've be. probably already answered somewhere. Yep. Uh, so next up, we have cumulative effects. Effects are in general cumulative. A card can potentially trigger several effects, and each single effect of a card may trigger. Discounts are cumulative, but a cost may not go below zero. Yeah, that's normal. You never get anything for doing something. You can yeah. never gain steel or titanium or energy or anything by doing or gain heat by <laughs> spending it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think this is all pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you have a card that says when you play a microbe card, you get this, and you have another card that says when you play a microbe, you get this, both cards go off. Uh, I don't think this has been an issue in any of our games. No, you have to keep track of some cards. It's not a discount, it's a rebate, and there is a difference. You have to yes. have the money to spend in the first place. Right. Yeah, that's important. Yep. Um, okay, moving on. We have the end of game greenery tiles. Mm -hmm. After the last production phase, players may, in the preserved player order, convert plants into one or more greenery tiles. The greenery tiles are paid for with eight plants each and placed one at a time triggering placement bonuses and other effects before the next tile is placed. When that player can't place more greenery tiles, the next player goes. After every chance has had a, ever, after every player has had a chance to place greenery tiles, end game, go, end game scoring begins. The important thing here that isn't really stressed enough on this is in the preserved player order. First player token does not pass until the start of the turn. So you do not pass the first player token. You do this in the order that you played the last generation because you're still in that generation. We screwed that up for years. Right. Like I, two years of playing Terraforming Mars, I think I messed that one up. I think the game's been out for two years now, but for a long time, more than half the games I played, we screwed that up. Now, as for the rest, we did that right. You do it one at a time. You don't just go, I put six plants on the board. You got to do them one at a time because everything can still trigger. Your blue cards that give you a bonus every time a plant's been played still happens. Your whatever birds that generate uh, tokens whenever greenery tiles are played still happens. If the Well, the oxygen level would have to be maxed by the end of the game, so that wouldn't go up. But everything else still goes off one at a time. Like if you put out your tree and you put it on a board spot that has two plant tokens on it, you're going to get those plants, which may give you enough to plant another one and so on. 
Makes sense. They said the hard part on that that we definitely played wrong for a long time is the preserved player order. Because we were thinking that, like, it was just a habit from playing other games. Then we get to the resource production phase. One of the first things we do is pass that first player token. Mm -hmm. Just because it's just, all right, it's, it's going to be your turn next turn. But technically, that doesn't happen until the start of the next round, which doesn't happen because the game's ended. Right. Which I still think is a really weird choice, to be honest. Like, why, why, why the person who was first that round gets the bonus of also getting to plant trees seems very arbitrary to me, but that is the rules. Yeah, because production phase is the last phase. And, yes. and so it's right after production phase, you go into this in the end game condition without mm -hmm. going to the player order phase. Correct. All right. Uh, no exact requirements. A, yeah. requ a requirement box next to the card's cost that doesn't explicitly say max is automatically a minimum requirement. Mm -hmm. For example, requires three oceans means that you can play the card if there are at least three oceans in play. There are no exact requirements. You don't have to have exactly three oceans yeah. on the board. You can have four or five or, you know, 27. Uh, no, you can't. But uh, <laughs> no, there can only be nine. <laughs> uh, but uh, but you don't have to have three exactly. I gotta admit, it's never come up, but I could see how someone might think that. No, the last time I taught this at public play at easy mode, there they you go. thought it was bang on exact requirements. That I had ah, correct. right. So, so I can definitely see that, right? Or if it shows three science tags, you need three exact science tags, not a minimum. Right. Which actually, in further printings, they should change it because the max say max, just change it so the others say min. Mm -hmm. Would yep. be a little clearer. But I, I, I never had this problem, but yeah, I can definitely see that being an issue. Yep. Uh, and no negative costs. Again, a cost may never be negative. If a card costing one MC and is discounted by two, you will play zero MC for it, not negative one MC, whatever that is. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> basic. Uh, it, you've played yeah. a board game before, right? Like, yeah. come on. Yep. Uh, uh, does Monopoly have discounts? I don't think it does. Mm, no, I mean, no. It's no. been a while. Um, I was trying to think of, I'm like, come on, go back to Monopoly. If you, if you get a $50 discount and you it costs 30 you don't get 20 bucks. Yeah. Or just think of going to McDonald's <laughs> yeah. or anywhere else in the world, right? Yeah. Do they pay me? Do they pay you if you, if you use a $10 off coupon and only spend Some 9 bucks? Do, do they give you a buck? I think. Actually, Amazon used to be bad for that. Mm. That, was, that was a trick you could make money on one of their coupon codes at one time. It only worked if you bought another item, but you could buy a four dollar item and apply a five dollar discount as long as your worker had that extra dollar there. You still got five dollars left. Right. Uh, hold on. But it doesn't work in terraforming marks. So I have uh, I have ac accidentally hidden D. I just need to bring her back. Um. <laughs> All right. The content's gonna be good. The video this time may not be the best. Yeah. No. Apparently. Um. There we are. Um, I threw you off stride by joining in. I no, I uh, yeah, I I I threw up the the terraforming Mars rules to look at them myself, and and it took over the oh. <laughs> so so D became the terraforming Mars rules in the corner for oh, a little while. It took over the Yitzi chant. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's the problem I was having with Yitzi. You got to make sure it's in its own window. Yeah, another, another I tab. yeah, I forgot I forgot to break it out and and yeah. and, and and tabbed. Um, yeah. All right, so moving on, order of triggered effects. If several effects or triggers are to be performed at the same time, the acting player chooses the order. If it is not in the action phase, the first player chooses order. If it's not in the action phase. That part confuses me. So if you're doing something in the research or production phase, play first what, what player. What would you be doing? Uh, huh. I, I just wonder what that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's about all I can I say at this point. I can't think of when that comes yeah, up. Yeah, I can't think of it. For the number of games we played, I can't think of when anything happens. Yeah, no. I'm like, there's the Venus Next expansion that if you're playing with five players has a thing where the Earth government raises one of the terraforming ratings, but that very clearly states that the first player gets right. to choose. So that's that's not this. I, I don't know. I don't. Is this FAQ just specifically is for the base game, though, isn't it? No, I well, I don't know, actually. It does not specify. It doesn't specify, okay. so. All right, well, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll figure out something about that. Yeah, I, I can't think of why that would come up, but sure. Uh, so next up, we have playing a card requirements. In order to play a card, you must, one, fulfill any requirement, two, be able to perform all the direct effects of the card 
with three exceptions below. And three, pay for the card. It's the three exceptions. You <laughs> must. Yes. A card may be played, as we talked about earlier, even yes. if it raises a global parameter that is already maxed out. Mm -hmm. Removes resources from any player and they don't have enough, or you don't want to target them. That one's important. Yeah. Or it adds resources, usually animals or microbes, to a card, but you don't have a card that can collect them. Yeah, that's In awesome. all those cases, do as much as you can and ignore the rest. See, that was something we played wrong. And I am wondering if it's because of the, the next bit we're going to mention or something, because I know that we were we played that wrong. We were like, oh, I can't. It's weird, though, is we played it right for some things. So for like the meteors that would crash into the planet to give you raise the temperature that would destroy plants, we'd be like, oh, if there's no plants to destroy, it's fine. But then we do stuff like, well, I can't play this card because I don't have any animal cards to put the animal on it. So like we, we had no a sheep to eat. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like we had a mixed version of this when we played. But I think this one's important. That probably can't be stressed enough. Like if you're raising the global printers that maxed out, you can play it. If you're going to try to steal resources and there's no resources to steal, or you don't want to, yep. that's another important one. Yep. Because, you know, part of Terraforming Mars can be diplomacy. Like, you're allowed to make deals. There's nothing in the rulebook that says you can't say, hey, don't take my plants, take his plants, and I'll make sure the next time I have a, this card, I'll give it to you type of thing. Yep. That is legit. There's no rules against that, I guess. But you can't exchange resources, right? But you can't, no, you can't trade. There's yeah. no trading, no but... So you, you can't, there is diplomacy. You yes. can, hey, don't take, I won't take this spot on the board if you don't, right? That's just mm -hmm. board game playing. Yep. That's allowed. So you could choose not to target someone. And the whole, you can collect as many microbes as you want with no card to put them on. You just won't get them. I think I think that's that's a pretty important one. I almost should be in bold or at the top of the list, in my opinion. The next yep. part's really important. Yep. Uh, and I'm actually just checking here real quick. The First edition would have been 2017. Is that the first? Uh, yeah, so first, uh, oh no, actually, uh, well no, first printing of German was 2016. Yeah, so 2016 was the first printing. And right. the first edition errata, if you've got a 2016 version, page 10 in the rule book states another exception that you don't need to be able to place a stated tile. This is wrong. <laughs> Any tile placed by the card must be placed unless it is an ocean tile and they are all placed already, as so per global parameter exceptions. Where we usually run into that one is there's these ones that you can place on the various mons, the yep. volcanoes. Yep. Those spots get covered up, and then you can't use that card at all. Right. Yep. Um, I want to see something. See, I don't remember that rule, so I am trying to figure out when I got... Terraforming Mars. How do I look at my plays? That's definitely one that we've stopped to check while playing. Yes, we have checked wait. that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did I? I played it. No way. 2019? That can't be right. <laughs> wait, how do, how do I get my all-time plays? Well, you That's definitely played it in 2019. Oh, there we go. No, no, I'm, I gotta go back through. 2016. So I got this the year it came out. Oh. November 5th, 2016 was my first play. No, that would have been with Neil's copy, and then I couldn't find it anywhere because it was out of print. Right. I got second printing in July of 2017. There you go. So so November 5th, 2016 is when I played Neil's original copy. That is the other reason Neil sold it, sold it, is at that print point, it was out of print, and he tripled his money. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, there was that sense. reason besides the fact we had a really terrible game. He's yet to play it again since, actually, because I keep telling him it's a good game. He's like, ah, <laughs> there's other stuff to play. I'm like, all right. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was trying to see if this which which version of the rule book I've I've got open as a PDF, but doesn't yeah. it's it's from Frank's Games, so it must be the newest one. It's got to be, yeah, yeah. If you get off their website. All right, so removing resources optional. Effects that remove your own resources are mandatory, mm -hmm. while effects that remove resources from any player, marked by a red border around the resource icon, are voluntary and may be performed in full, in part, or not at all. Only one player or card may be targeted at a time with the effects of a card. Removing production is always mandatory. So that's an interesting one, is you can't, if, if you've got a, you know, steal uh, five steel, you can't steal three from you and two from you. That's an yeah, important you one. Can't split it. Yep. But, but if you only want to steal three, you can do that, as long as it's from one yep. player. No, this one's important. We played this wrong at first. Um... 
the big thing was you we thought you had to remove your own hmm. so if no one else especially with animals right so if you played predators and you also have well pets is a good example because pets can't be eaten say birds and no one else had any animals your predators would start eating your birds hmm. which i personally thought was really thematic and fit but that is not how the rules are written right and we did play that wrong for a while that's one of the first ones we learned we played wrong right we never thought of the target two players, so I don't know if that was very clear in the rule book or not. The interesting one, though, is the removing production is always mandatory. Yeah. So if I have a reduce your steel production by one to increase my steel production, I can't say, no, I'll be nice and not do it. Right. But I, I can with that. everything else. Right. So actual, yeah, so actual, actual resources can be ignored, but production cannot. You must take those steel production. Now, if I remember correctly, the steel production card I'm thinking of, which I think is called a mining rights or something like that, specifically states that yeah. it's a requirement. Right. So it's one of those you have to fulfill the requirement to get the effect. Right. So I think it was clear that way. Yep. So next up, we have reserved areas. There are 12 blue areas reserved for ocean and three areas reserved for specific cities. No other tiles may be placed there unless specifically stated. Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. I think. You can't so this just is drop definitely a, just the base game. You can't just drop a tree down on, uh, or a, a plants down on, uh, you know, Mons, blah, 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 or whatever. The one I see people no. mess up all the time is the spot for Noctis City. And Noctis City is not the capital. I've seen people mess that up. That should almost be in here, because people build the capital, which is a white tile, right. and put it on the spot that says Noctis City, just because, I don't know. Oh, it actually, and, and, and you're, you're you're jumping the gun. It does, we, we get there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, you said it wrong, Sean, because you can yes, on mons, build you can. on the top of the Mons. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah the Mons don't count. The Mons can be built on. But the Noctis City spot and then the other ones are the ones up in the, the Ganymede Space Station and the Phobos. Phobos. Yeah. Space Haven. Wow. that's You know you played the game a lot. When... <laughs> I'm like, right. I don't have anything in front of me except <laughs> this text, and I'm remembering that. That's All pretty right. bad. So moving on, we have Reshuffle the Deck. An addition. The deck mm -hmm. is reshuffled from the discard pile if it becomes empty. Not when you have to draw from it, right? but when it's empty, which I honestly have no idea why it matters in this game. It's not a deck builder. Yeah, in this sure. game, there are, but there are more than enough games where it does matter. So I think it, 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 it makes sense to clarify. It's, it, it's all about the whole, uh, nowhere it matters, okay? This is superpower gamer, is when you're sitting there and it's your turn and you know we're about to draft, and I have a bunch of cards in my hand. Do I use my sell patents action now right. to put them in the deck now before we draw? Right. Yep. That's and it's only when the deck's empty, right? Like that's yep. the, the mm -hmm. one. That's the one chance that'll matter. Is it's the one player's turn, and they're like, "All right, I'm going to sell these five projects just so they go back in the deck, so it reduces the chance everyone else gets the card they really need, or something like that." Yeah. So like it, it can matter. Like to yeah. me, that's <laughs> such a small amount. But yeah. Sure. No, that makes sense. And to be honest, I have no idea if we played that properly. <laughs> I honestly don't know what I've done. When the deck runs up, we shuffle it, but I can't remember if we shuffled it when we had to draw from it or specifically when it became empty. I right. don't remember. Well, and you all, neither one of you are the kind of power gamer who does that kind of manipulative. Right? Like, <laughs> we're, we're going to add three more cards to a deck of 75 to reduce the chances you'll get that one. I don't know. That's, yeah. that's power gaming. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hey, there are tournaments for this game. I could see holding on to a card. Or that, the other way, until after I think a shuffle. you might want it, and I won't sell it until after the shuffle. Yep. I, I would do that. Fair yep. enough. Same, yeah, same thing. The opposite side of that. Yep. Is I'm not discarding this now. I'm waiting until the deck shuffled, because right. I know we're not going to go through the deck the second time. We've never gone through the deck twice. And now I'm going to sell my patents to make sure you can't get them. Yeah, that's even more yep. likely. Yep. So next up, we have the solo end game. The game ends after 14 generations, which I wish I would have known when I the first time I played it on Steam. Uh, in order to win, you must finish the terraforming before the extra round of converting plants into greenery tiles. Huh. Only games you win are scored after the extra placement of greenery tiles. So you can't just save up all your plants to do it all in that extra build phase, I guess. Right, yeah. It's... But it counts towards your score. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I again, I haven't played solo. So no, I have to say, I, I'm I am actually now that I'm 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 getting better at terraforming Mars because again, up until last week, I'd only ever played played it with I guess with someone else once. Yeah. Um, and I I I was so proud that I came within two points of you last week. Um, 
And that, cause D wasn't there. That, that, that helped. Yeah. Um, that's what it was. Uh, solo setup. Randomly place two neutral cities and greeneries. Terraforming rating starts at 14 instead of 20. Corporate era is used. Add all CE cards and start with zero production plus what your chosen corporation gives you. Pretty straight. It's funny, you keep saying CE cards. I'm sure that's supposed to be the symbol there somehow. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Corporate era, CE. Um, <laughs> sure. So I think that, that that's pretty obvious. I mean, it, except for the randomly placed two neutral cities and greeneries, you know, everything else is exactly what you would do. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, tags on event cards. They are active and may trigger effects while being played, but are not counted after this, during, neither, neither during the game nor during endgame scoring. They may still give an endgame VP if they contain a VP icon. Uh, this one I've seen other people mess up. I, this is one I remember getting right right from the beginning. It's stressed pretty well in the rule book, but I've seen other people try to count up the whatever tags on their... They're events, right? So, like, I know there's events have the Earth icon, and you may have a card that's like, I'm going to get one point for every three Earth icons I have at the end of the game. You don't get to count the events. Right. Um, then I've had people question, why do they have them on there? I'm like, because there's cards that are like, all Earth cards cost you two less to play, and that's an Earth card. And that tag matters for that small amount of time that it's face up before you, between when you do the effect and after you flip it over when it's done. Right. So that one's an important one I always stress when teaching the game. There's discounts, there's things like uh, if you play the science tag, draw a card, stuff like that, right? Yeah. But I, I remember that we actually screwed that up when we were very first playing there, the game. I remember yeah. screwing it up. All right, so next up, we have an additional rule, which I think should have been a little obvious, but apparently not. Tiles can't stack. You can additionally, from the or addition from the rules, a tile can never be placed on top of another tile. Okay. For sure, that's not what I ever thought of. Seems but. pretty obvious to me, but uh, I guess if it wasn't stated, someone may have run into that. You know, I, some people think outside the box. Yeah, I was going to say, there's nothing that said you couldn't, so I'm going to place this ocean tile on top of this other ocean tile. I don't yeah, know. I, yeah, I guess. I don't know. But uh, Yeah, I don't know. Hasn't come up for me. For yeah, sure. yeah, it's one of those rules where it's like, yes, yeah, some people think outside the box and are doing the, the super gamer thing. And it's like, hey, if I do this, well, that would trigger this, 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 and this. No, you can't do that. Just stop. No. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting one. It's, yep. it's, it's one of those. It's interesting. It came up. Yep. Uh, and then what cards can collect resources? Another addition. <laughs> Only cards that explicitly can use the resources on them may collect such resources. Examples of uses are spending them in an action or getting VPs for them. Viral enhancers may, for example, not collect resources because it doesn't do anything with resources. So the triggered resource gained from its microbe tag will instead be a plant resource as stated on the card. Yeah, this one's why I've seen someone try to pull this one. And I, I like, it was one of those, I had to grab the rule book and show it to them because they didn't believe me. But I'm like, yeah, obviously not. I'm like, this says place a thing on a card. You can't just put it. And I had people like just trying to collect stuff on random cards. Right. <laughs> they're like, but I'm getting microbes, so I'm just going to store them over here. And I'm like, no, no, you can't do that. And they're like, why not? And I'm like, well, for one, that's against the rules. But second, how do you know what that cube's for now? Yeah. Because like, yeah, you got a microbe and then you got a plant and you put that one over on this other card. Like, no, you have to be on a card that can use them. Yeah. And viral enhancers, I've definitely seen people mess that one up. Yep. Yeah, see, this came up the first time we played Venus Next because there's all kinds of cards that make floaters. floaters. But there's not as many cards that use the floaters per se. Yes. And um, the one player was insisting that he could just put floaters on any Venus card. Yes, he just wanted to put it on Venus cards because, because they were on Venus cards. It's a win condition for how many floaters you've collected, right? So right. he's like, well, I'll just put them here. I'm not going to spend them. And I'm like, well, I don't think that's how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember where it was in the rule book. I had, that was one where an argument where we had to pull out the rule book and show them and be like, look, show me how it says that. And if I remember correctly, they, they still argued it and we just did a whole, there's five of us playing, four of us say no, sorry. Yeah. Next time we'll send them here. There you go. All right, moving on to our next session, section number three, list of cards. Capital. These are, yeah, specific card issues. So capital, white tile. This tile is only placed by the capital card, <laughs> not by Noctis City, yeah. Hobos Space Heaven, or Ganymede Colony. Those cards place normal city tiles as indicated by their icons. Capital has a special tile that counts as a city tile, 
because it scores adjacent ocean tiles, in addition to the normal scoring of adjacent greenery tiles. They really should have just made it a gray tile, like the other 10 <laughs> special tiles, and right. it could be less confusing. And then, and just knock the city because it's, I don't know, because it's in the board and it says knock the city and has a picture of a little dome city. People just think that must be the capital, right? right? Like, Well, I mean, people think of, you know, when, you, when you're when you thinking of a country or anything, you name, your your capital cities are yeah. named. They, they, you know, they have that importance. It's not just capital. Mm -hmm. um, and so the fact that there is a named city makes you think. It's the capital. capital. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I've seen that multiple games. Yep. And well, that's one I tend to forget when I'm teaching. Because, like, there's one capital card in the deck of, I don't know how many cards come in the original game, 80 cards or whatever, or 180 cards. Yep. It is important to note it counts as a city. I've seen people try to argue that one, too. Like, yep. oh, I don't get, you don't get the city bonus because that's the capital. I'm like, no, no, it's it's just still a city. Yep. It still generates pets. Yep. It's still, yeah, it still yeah. generates pets or it still generates income for every city placed or all that fun stuff. Yep. Uh, the Ecoline effect. Ecoline's effect is not an action and so may be used any number of times during the generation. It is an effect that alters the plant conversion action on the player board, making it cheaper to use. So that's the Ecoline Corporation. Yes, yes. yes. Ecoline Corporation. And so yeah. again, it's not an action, it is a discount, basically. Um, sounds like, or sounds like anyway, making it cheaper to use. So it basically just gives you a cheaper, uh, cheaper plant conversion option. Yeah, you pay seven yes. instead of eight to put green. Right. There you go. Right. See, and so, to me, I, I think I've done that one wrong. I, I would Unless it says it, because it has the arrow. And right. in general, a blue action with an arrow, you're supposed to put a cube but on and only not, use once per generation. It's not a blue action. It's on your court card. Yeah, and it's a blue action on your court card. Is I'm looking it, at it right now. Cards in front of me, so. okay. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now, and it's a blue <laughs> action with a red arrow, gotcha. which generally means you can only do it once. So I, that's a good, good. I don't know, if it's not an action, why does it have an arrow? That's yeah, just that bad design. That goes back to the Gloomhaven problem. Yeah. It looks like every blue card action in the deck. Now, what I can't see, because it's a small picture, is what it says. Hmm. If it right. clearly states it underneath, fair enough. I think it states it. I remember um, I can't Tom has up. played that corporation to uh, great effect. You may hey, always sir. effect. You yeah, may always, always pay seven plants instead of eight to place one greenery. Yeah, so it's just bad graphic design. It shouldn't have that red arrow. Right. That red arrow is the the action arrow in the game. Right. Or it shouldn't be in blue and say effect or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like it just, it says effect, not action. So I guess that's your difference. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I, I mean, don't think we screwed up because the text is very clear. Yeah, it does. I don't it's think we did always. it wrong. I'm just complaining it, about the, uh, the, the graphical choice mm -hmm. on that card. Yeah, it very definitely says always, so. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. All right. Uh, Invent, uh, Inventrix and Tharsis mm -hmm. Republic first action. These corporations have a predefined first action, meaning that the first of your two allowed actions on your first turn in the first action phase is used for this purpose. You may use the second action for that turn normally if you want. And this is something that is freaky when you're playing the Steam game and pick one of those corporations, because all of a sudden stuff just happens for it. Like you expect yeah. it to have your first turn go, and all of a sudden stuff just happens and you're down a turn. And it's weird the first time. Um, I, I just wonder the design choice here, why you just didn't start before the game starts with that stuff. Because, well, because the, I think it's balancing it out by giving you kind of a penalty by saying yeah. that dictating your first action on the first round. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but for what they give you, it's not, I don't know, so it used one action, big deal. Like we said at the top, you get an infinite number of actions. It's true. It's true. not like the board's full and you're going to get that sweet you, spot you before anyone that else. Sweet thing. I mean, sometimes, sometimes people raise the oxygen really quick. It has happened to me where a card aged out in that first generation that I couldn't play it because the oh, oxygen went up so fast. Yeah, I guess. Then you play it your second action. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a design choice. I just wonder why. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to say that because they've gone that way, it seems to me like it looks like it's a balance issue. And like the other thing too they may have the, run into that balance issue in the uh, in play. Yeah. The other thing, too, is it will trigger other people's actions, right? So Tharsis Republic has placed the city. If I'm playing a different corp and I've already played a thing that for, I play animals before your turn, 
uh, pets, sorry. Mm-hmm. If I play pets before your turn and you're playing Tharsis, I'm going to get a pet the first turn. Yep. Right. Yep. But I just, again, I wonder why. Yeah. If, you, if the turn order was different, I wouldn't. And I'd be right. frustrated because, damn it, you got to place that before me. You know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's just a weird choice. No. I don't think we ever messed that up. But like, you would know. You would know that they're playing the one that gets to place the city the first round. So you'd want to try and hurry up and put pets out if you happen to start with it. Yeah, but it only matter in turn order because they have to take better as their Yes. You have yeah. no dictating over no, turn order. No, but it would dictate. It would dictate. And you don't yeah. draft yeah. your yeah. search cards. So. Maybe I want to make sure I play that in the first round. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, it that, wouldn't matter. Well, no, it would though. If you have pets in your hand and you are playing before oh, someone, yes. you would have to play. Then, then yes. you yeah. you'd be dumb if you didn't play pets. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. You might Assuming have been, you could, uh, well, not necessarily. It depends what the rest of your hand is. Well, yeah, but I mean, you may have been planning one one, one set of actions and and and, and yes. thinking you could hold off on pets, where in real realistically, you don't want to hold off on pets. You, if you probably want to load as quick as possible. They yeah. can't be easy, so why not? Yep. If you get pets in your first hand, you're probably going to win the game because that's kind of how territory march can play sometimes. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. But I, it's it's going to give you an experience. advantage over everyone else. Yep. Same with if you get the card that lets you transmit. Uh, I want to take that card out of the game. The one that lets you change titanium into spaceship for one victory point each. That one, that, I, feel I think, should be removed from the game. If you get at the beginning, that's a If you get it any time, even like three rounds from the end, it's like I get a point every round for free. Well, see, pets, you're going to be limited by there's only so yeah. many cities exactly. that are going out, right? Yeah. So that that one, I don't feel no, like I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't think pets is broken. I just think the person who gets it early does it got lucky and has an advantage. Right. The the starship one I think is broken. I literally think that card should almost be removed from the game. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll get to that. Um, yeah, maybe. Robotic workforce can only target a card with the building tag, mm-hmm. and it only copies that card's production box, not yeah. other effects. Any decreases of production stated in that box must also be performed. It cannot copy a production box that is part of an action or effect on the upper panel of a blue card. Only a production box on the lower panel of a card with the building tag. Yeah, that one, it trips people up, so it's... Yeah, I've never had a problem with it, but I've heard, I've seen people not quite get it. It's a great card. Uh, for the record, I think you and I are going to have to do a Jitsi call and while I'm building this so that I can make sure I've got the right cards up on screen as we're going through this. Uh, oh, there you go. Fine. Um... All right, moving on, we have Search for Life. This is a first edition errata, and it should read Reveal and Discard. Um, yeah, the original just said Reveal, and I guess some people must have thought it was Reveal and Keep. Right. That's one of those, if it, if it has, I forget, if it has a certain tag on it, you get you get a token, you get a, a counter. Right. It might be a science tag. A viral tag. Viral tag, yeah, or whatever. Really I, give a life. Yeah, I remember the card. So, for Small Asteroid, this is another first edition errata, there should be a dash before the plants icon in this card. This te- The text is correct. Now, this is a promo card not included in the base game, so, you know, your mileage may vary. You may never even have seen this card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it probably you lose plants, because every asteroid makes you lose plants, and they forgot to put the mine in, so yeah. you didn't have the red box. I don't know. Uh... <sighs> Here we go. A UNMI action. The UNMI yes, works... It, it's two red plants. Ah, uh, okay. So the UNMI action. UNMI works exactly like a blue card with an action. It may be used only once per generation. Uh, don't know that one. See there. This is directly opposite of what the third, the Econo line effect. Right. It looks identical. It's a blue box with a three and an arrow. That, but it says action, not effect. But it says action, but it has that red arrow, right? Like yep. it's yep. that that's my complaint. One corp works one way, the other corp works another way with a little tiny grammatical difference. Well, you know, I have to say, I mean the the act the the, the red arrow just means this becomes this. And, yeah, and it's, whether it's an action or effect is stated in big part. bold letters right there. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, I get I get your issue. Yeah. Uh, self-replicating robots. The cards on SSR, SRR are not yet in play, and so the resources on them do not contribute towards the eccentric award on the Hellas map. Huh. Thematically, oh. these resources are not resources, 
but huh. represent your construction progress. That is, but the resources are resources. <laughs> the resources are still resources, though, and it is possible to use the other cards, CEO's favorite project, for example, to add resources to it as long as it doesn't specify cards in which, in play, which Eccentric does. Wow. That's, that that self-replicating robot card? That's a promo card, right? Yeah, it's a promo. I hope so, because that just makes it's a very promo. little sense. It doesn't sense. say that here, but it's a promo card. It's a neat promo card. It's one I'm also tempted, excuse me, tempted to pull out, just because it confuses people. Mm -hmm. It goes up exponentially. So at the start of the round, you can put a token on it. You put a card under it, any card you want from your hand, and then you put a token on it. And then next round, you can double the tokens. So it goes from one to two to four to, right. to eight to 16, you know, binaries up. And then at any point, you can pay the card underneath and you get discounted all the tokens that are on there. Right. So you can put a 36 under there, right? And after, what, eight generations? I don't know my binary anymore. Maybe <laughs> I'm on eight generations. Whatever number of generations, it'll pay for itself for free. Right. And it's kind of a neat card. But yeah, there's cards that say put a token on any card. Now you can throw them on there, right? And that speeds up the process. But then the eccentric award is you count all your tokens on all your cards. And for some reason, they don't count. That's kind of weird. But I guess it'd be really easy to win that award if you had self replicating robots. You just let it keep going. And you know, I think that actually came up once. Did it? Yeah. I think someone actually won by saying, look at all these self replicating robots I have. Yeah. Right. Interestingly, uh, at least one of the. Uh, these it has a spelling error on it too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I'm just looking at some of the some Not of the different average. cards, and I'm like, eh, interesting. Um, anyway, all right. So that ends the basic portion mm -hmm. of the FAQ. Now we can we're going to move on and go through some of the other comments and questions that have happened since that was posted. Uh, that was last edited on Friday, May 11th, 2018, and of course uh, in the uh, Time uh, well since since it was originally posted and uh, originally posted January tenth, twenty seventeen. Last edited Friday, May eleventh, twenty eighteen. And uh, other comments have happened in the middle. Um, I would be interested in reading an FAQ for Venus Next. Well, we could try to find and see if there is a Venus Next FAQ. So I didn't see anything on page one except for a spelling correction. Okay, so we'll just. Uh, so page two. Skip along to page Trying to find. Two. The thing is, I think they edited the original because I've read some of this. And That's I'm like, why yeah. there's a distance mark. Right? right? Yeah. So, well, I'm wondering, like, uh, we should really if to see if there's anything here. I'm going to jump way ahead. Sorry for uh, so Enoch, anyone trying to watch this. Enoch Frexelius is talking, again, about robotic workshop. You copy the effect, not a specific amount. So if the effect counts tags, and you have more tags when you played Robotic Workforce than the effect originally did, the effect's now better. So I think that one's important. So when you don't, like, when I first played this card, I got three ME production because I had six tags. If I use Robotic Workforce seven turns later, I don't have to have remembered how much I got. Right. It just regenerates, which I thought was interesting. So it's going to recount. So you redo any of the counting. You're getting the full effect of the card. Right. Uh, that one I remember flipping through. Uh, so here's another I, one from Jacob. Playing a beginner corporation solo is okay, which is contradicts what we read earlier, but it's not recommended. Right. In solo, you have time to evaluate the cards without creating downtime for your friends. But corporate era should always be played solo with an exclamation point. If you start with one production and exclude one third of the cards, you'll end up with a very easy and boring challenge. Right. You'll miss out on a number of large, cool engines. Mm -hmm. uh, here's some clarifications. Sort of next while I'm going through this. Uh, I'm actually just sort of, uh, I jumped ahead to like 2018, so this is all post the last time this was edited. No, but this stuff definitely wasn't in there before. Hmm. Um, uh, if a player has a production of zero and a card plate would drop that production, can it be played? Uh, I think this is pretty clear in the rule book, but the answer is no. That is from Frexelius again. The only time that works is if it's mega credits, because mega credits can go negative. Yes, but only to negative whatever's on the five, player board. Five, five, I think it is. Yeah. You can't go less than that. Right. So as long as you, you can't go lower than what it shows, you can't go to negatives on the player board unless there's a spot. Correct. 
Uh, negative five, correct? Yes. Yeah, I thought it was negative. Five. I just, I just found, I just found the picture of game trays. I'm like, <laughs> which I go. like. Those are really nice. Um, uh... When placing greening tiles at the end of the game, the effects of blue cards are still triggered. Yes, that's just a confirmation from Jacob. The blue cards still go off. I think we even specifically said that. Here's an Enoch. Um, I'm looking for this. You only get three resources. So that's the if you found life. If you found life, okay. If you have found life, you get three victory points. You can find it twice. It doesn't matter. You either found life or you don't. Okay. Right? So you either get three victory points or zero. Mm -hmm. Though keep the card because you can keep putting counters on it, which matters for the eccentric milestone in Ellis and Elysium. Yeah, and there's nothing on the card that limits you from using it after you found life, which someone did point that out in a game recently with me and chose to continue using it. And I can't remember why they It would it. cycle through the deck quicker if you wanted that, the deck to get shuffled Maybe. so you can see something. Yeah. So I think that's important. Interesting. There's there's some. Uh... Yeah, exactly. If you want to stall, you yeah. could do that as an action as because an action. you're trying to go around because you're hoping someone's going to raise the temperature so you can play a card in your hand, for example. Yeah. The, uh... Why no 10 card draft in the first research phase of the game? Because Terraforming Mars is not just about getting good cards, but getting good combos. The official start gives you a smorgasbord where you can pick combos that would not be presented to you if you drafted, because your own drafting would stifle any strategies you didn't think of or draft for. The game presents you with interesting new opportunities. If you drafted the starting cards, you'd have nothing to go on, just two corporations. One, Which one do you draft for? I can see people drafting generally useful cards instead of actually trying to find combos. An interesting yeah. compromise that people may want to try is pick five cards out of your 10 and then draft the remaining five. That would let you start up a nice combo and then expand it. It would also probably give you some useful cards in the unlikely case you didn't get any in your own starting 10. That's an interesting variant officially from Jacob. Now, Prelude's pretty much fix this, right? Because you have more to go on than yes. your, just your two corporations. It really gives you a plan. So an interesting clarification, even though I think it was it was stated pretty clearly in the FAQ, uh, someone asked uh, earlier on, uh, or later later on after the after the FAQ, um, if someone plays a card that gives you VP and production improvement as well as place a city on Mars, but there are no legal places to put that city, you can't play that card. That contradicts what they said earlier. No, cities are not water tiles. Didn't yeah. it say water that if you no. place the tile, you... Oh, true. So yeah, exactly. It was the opposite way, yes. Yeah, water you tiles... You know to play a mons, whatever. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if they, if you can't place the city, you can't place the, play the card. I think we did that correctly, actually. I think that did come up once. I am on page five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm on page 15. Uh, <laughs> but I just skipped ahead in time, so... There, there it is, and there's they rewrote it in Spanish. Interesting. Hmm. I am not. Oh, here's one. What do we got? Yeah, I've seen this. This comes up a couple times. Uh, if you use the standard project to place the city, you get plus one ME production. If you're playing a card that places the city, you don't get one ME production. Instead, you read the card effect. Getting one ME production is not a rule for placing cities. It's an effect when you do the standard project to place a city. Yeah. I've seen people mess that one up before. Right. Uh, another one that says the word take means take the card without paying for it. Inventors Guild and Business Network let you look at a card and discard it or pay 3MC to put it in your hand. It doesn't say anywhere that you're supposed to play the card immediately or anything like that. Mm -hmm.
dead air that make yeah. it yeah. fire. <laughs> yeah, this is the... Uh, we often is... screw up and forget to give ourselves the plus one mega credit when doing the standard projection. Like that's I don't. Something... <laughs> I know that we have played games where people are correcting each other at the table and saying, hey, you know what you forgot to do? Rules often forgotten. Cities cannot be placed next to other cities. Greeneries must be placed next to another tile that you already own, if possible. Oceans must be placed on areas reserved for oceans. Non-ocean tiles may not be placed on areas reserved for oceans. Nocta City, Ganymede Colony, and Fogo Space Station have their own appointed spaces on the board where only those tiles may be placed. Now, the first time you place a greenery tile, you can put it anywhere. If it's your first tile, but if you already have a city on the board, you have to place it next to the city. It yes. has to go next to... But even if you don't have a city, if you have, like, one of those animal preserves You're or right. mining yes. rights... If you or... have one of your little colored cubes on there, you yeah. have to place it. If there is no legitimate placement because it's all been blocked off, then you can go anywhere. You don't have to go to adjacent to another greenery tile of your own. You just have to go adjacent to something you else own. you own. Yep. I know we had to look it up what happens when, you know, when you get boxed in, right? And we're like, you know, then you can go anywhere. Yes, which has happened. Now I see lots of people arguing about how overpowered yeah. some, <laughs> some corporations are. We have found certain corporations do tend to win more often. Or you have to, what I found, though, is you have to counter them. If certain ones are in play, it's like, okay... I need to make sure that if the Econoline players in play, all of my asteroids are destroying their plants. Ecoline can Eco -line, be yeah. totally kick butt, yeah. Interesting. All right, let's take a look. There's for... people specifically asking about self-replicating robots with the eccentric award. And as I said, I, I know a game where that did apply for us, and we, we ruled it wrong. See yet again. You shouldn't be playing with beginner corporations. If you're experienced enough to analyze the 10 starting cards and fit them into a specific corporation, you shouldn't be playing a beginner corporation. You should remove them from the game. Uh -huh. That's, again, coming from one of the publishers. That's what I said. I, I thought it was really weird that it was allowing non-starting players. So it's in the rules you can pick a beginner corp, but like they really strongly suggest it only for using them for new players. Right. Otherwise, that first game, how do you choose which of those well, 10 cards? Well, that makes sense, right? right? Here's 10 cards. You've never played this game before. Pick <laughs> between those. And you've got to pay for them. And don't spend too much or you won't be able to do anything in your first turn. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. Here, I'm just trying to see if we have a uh, prelude FAQ. Nocta City can be placed anywhere when you're using an expansion map without Nocta City on it. Not this city, not this city, not this city. Hmm, doesn't seem to be an FAQ for Prelude. Yeah, I couldn't find one either. This is the only one I could find. I'm just surprised there's not. Venus Next had so many rules and ambiguities when we played it for us, particularly with the floaters, that I figured there would be. I can't speak English. Da, 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 da. Wow. There, there's, okay, there's a really long one here that's not worth reading. This is a movie <laughs> that's so cool it must be allowed. I'm like, yes. what did he do? Uh, it's up there. I read through it, and it's just, it's a good combo. There's no actual FAQ or anything there. It's just someone pulled a really good combo, and the designer was impressed. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, I'm not finding a lot more here. I think everyone has asked everything they needed to ask at this point. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of little bickering and 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 verb, verb you know, just stuff. But, but it's, it's mostly it's, people um, are be just being... about the wording, but not actually clarifying any rules. Yeah, and it's all just silly. Uh, like playing a card that requires you to pay for it first, then all the effects in the card are put individually into a pile of effects. Now we're starting to oh, sound like Magic the Gathering. If a card <laughs> raises temperature by two steps, then this would be two separate effects. Now you choose to perform any of the available effects. And if that triggers an additional effect, such as a placement bonus or other player's bonus, they get added to the pile of effects. Continue to perform effects from the pile of effects until it's empty. Action finished. So here is the very basic chain. Pay first, perform an effect before any other effects happen, 
then do your next effect until you're out of effects. You get to choose the order of those effects, which I feel like I'm, I'm a Magic the Gathering judge now. <laughs> First, you say, oh, yeah, like, and then someone asked him to re-explain it. So here we go. Consider Subterranean Reservoir, an event that adds an ocean. You must first pay for it and reveal the card. And then the ocean placement and possibly kickback from Media Group, get plus three mega credits, is added to the pile of waiting effects. Then you choose to place the ocean tile. And following the effects are potentially added to the plus three mega credits, printed placement bonuses. The minus six mega credits of the self pole is considered such a bonus. Ocean adjacency placement bonus, terraforming rating, and possibly an opponent's plants because of Arctic algae. You may not perform any of these new effects before you actually place the ocean tile. That's basically just saying you have to do things in order. It's it's going back to this huge combo someone pulled off where they ended up like getting to place three oceans for six bucks or something like that. You can and they're do still them in arguing any order you it, like, but you have to actually do them in order. But you have to do them. Uh, board game experience. Check requirements, pay, perform effects and triggered effects in any order, and place the card. Uh, ooh, oh, oh, possible. I'm just tracking off. I'm, I'm tracking down some of uh, the threads that Brixen has commented on. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> but uh... the only way you can ever interact with other players via card effects is if the icons have a red order. That's, I don't know. He's very much stressing that. So, all right, we're going to be able to cut off the whole end of this. I yeah, think. no, I think we're, we're pretty much done here. I keep hunting and pecking, but I'm not really finding like, anything. There's, there's little bits here, but... Yeah, yeah. But I am getting prelude questions in this thread, so mm -hmm. I don't think there's a standalone. Well, they, they have their own forum. I mean, there's a forum for it, but it just doesn't have an FAQ. Works. Like ordinary projects, except you, except for how you choose them and when you play them. They have no cost, so you can't benefit from any discount, but the tags can trigger other effects such as the and tag with Saturn systems. Note, you must be able to perform the effect in order to choose and play the card. Hmm. Rules, rules, expansions, pre-order, save the planet, the Steam game. It's weird they don't even have a link to the FAQ on their webpage. Weird. Yeah, it was weird. For some reason, he like the when I click on his name, it doesn't take me to all of the posts that he's done the way I would expect it to. <laughs> What? Board Game Geek not working as expected. Mm, yeah, Never well, happened. there is that. Uh, <laughs> I, I've i said my piece on Board Game Geek. Uh, I don't need to rant on that. Our trade loose cards counted for Tycoon. Uh, 15 plus blue or green cards in play. No, oh, that's uh, actually... No, because prelude cards are pink. Yeah, no. This is a good one, though. After nearly 100 games, I have two questions. One about the Hellas map. If the temperature is already maxed out, can I spend eight heat for nothing just to stall? Just to count as doing an action, and instead of passing, remain active one more turn in the generation. Yes, converting heat can be done so really? you will raise a max parameter, yeah. which is left but ignored as per the tree exceptions, huh. which I think we played that the opposite. And see, so, yeah, it's, it's been very clear in all, the, in all the clarifications that any of those... Uh, wow parameters can be exceeded you don't get the terra uh, terraforming rating for them but no, you can like do if, the act if you're not if thermalist isn't funded what a way to delay the end of the game mm -hmm. yeah and we got colonies questions here already too if the temperature is already maxed out oh yeah yeah the south pole hex on hellas map requires the player to pay six mega credits in order to place a tile there and gain an ocean what if there are no more oceans left the six mega credits are still required, and then for nothing. Yes, in the same way placing an ocean tile is ignored if maxed, while well, losing six mega credits is not, and so has to be performed in order for the action to be taken. So those were interesting. Hmm. All right, are we just about running down these now? Do we want yeah, to? Uh... Good. All right. Well. Thank you for joining us for our read-through of the Terraforming Mars 
FAQ and associated questions we discovered elsewhere on the uh, interwebs. Uh, hope you'll enjoy this. Feel free to comment with any questions or clarifications down below if you've got anything. And uh, if you'd like, if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy hearing about FAQs, slap that like button, follow, and uh, hit the bell to get notified when we've got more videos coming up later. And for those of you in the chat, I did just drop a PDF, the official PDF of this FAQ. So yeah, for uh, Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo. Join us every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. We record the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast and answer your gaming and game night questions. Speaking of questions, we need new ones. Send in your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or go to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. If you dig this video and the other content we produce, it'd be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and considered tipping the bellhop and supporting our efforts. I think for the Tabletop Bellhop team, we're all out. Uh, Sean's already said goodbye. What about you, Dee? Good night, folks. Good night and game on. <laughs>